Hi, this is Rick from Green Our Planet. Today we're in one of the school fruit orchards and I want to talk to you about fruit tree pruning. So pruning, when do you do it? Well, for most trees, um, and deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves in the wintertime, you want to prune in the wintertime when they're asleep. The only trees that are not pruned when they're deciduous are citrus trees, and they're pruned in the spring or early summer after fruit is set. So the first steps of pruning a tree are identifying the tree. You want to find out the age of the tree, the type of tree, and where the fruit is produced. That's going to guide your next pruning steps. Some trees are pruned to more of an open center. Some trees are pruned taller, like you'd see most landscape trees. And some trees are pruned open shape, kind of a bush shape. If you're gonna prune fruit trees, you're going to need the right equipment. And what I have here is a pair of loppers. This is for larger cuts pair of bypass pruners. This will be for most cuts, most smaller cuts on the tree. Pruning saw for larger cuts. Alcohol for sanitizing your tools either in between each cut or definitely in between each tree. And of course, gloves. You can wear heavier gloves, leather gloves, if you're working around a lot of thorns. I like lighter gloves because they're not as heavy. The first type of cuts you should be making on your fruit trees are the large structural or thinning cuts. These cuts are made using your loppers or your pruning saws, and they help develop the structure of the tree and open up the tree for the smaller cuts, which should come after this. I'm gonna show you not only maintenance pruning on a mature orchard as opposed to younger trees that you're building. And I'm going to show you a little bit of rehab pruning. So let's go into the orchard and I'll show you how to take care of a more mature established tree. So this here is a pear tree and pears by nature tend to grow straight up. They want to grow as a central leader tree. We wanna keep them low and we wanna keep them accessible. So for this pear today, we're going to clean out the inside. Just like on the pomegranate trees, we want to be able to reach in and grab the fruit. And as far as fruiting, pears fruit exactly like an apple do. They develop long-term spurs for the life of the tree. So you do want to develop those spurs at a very early pruning age and then continue to develop them as the tree grows bigger and bigger. So as far as cleaning out the inside of this pear, there's really no wrong or right way to do it. It's completely how you want to see your finished tree. As long as there's some outside branches that are set up for producing fruit, you really can't go wrong with this. If you make a few mistakes up here, you can always start lower down here and build the tree back up. As long as you don't take a lot of your prior year's growth away, you'll always have a backup to use. Now for me, I'm gonna remove these two inner branches and they're crowding a lot of the growth here, but I am also gonna lose some of my growth here. But that's going to be taken up by these branches here. So I have my large lopers. I wanna get close to the base of the branch that I can, make a nice clean cut. Remove that out of the way. I have another branch right here. And you can see the tree ring right along the branch. That's my guide for cutting. So I'm going to align my lopers with that ring. get a nice clean cut. Good sharp tools. So one of the things about pruning pear is on all of the other pruning you want to remove 
growth that is straight up in the air. Since pears naturally grow that way, we're kind of looking for growth like that. Now I have a choice on this branch that I can remove this branch that's growing straight up, or I can remove this branch that's giving me a little bit more of a curve to the outward edges of the tree. I think I'm gonna keep this because this is a garden where we're going to be walking around and we're going to be doing a lot of work outside of the tree. I'm gonna keep this tree as tight to the center as I can while still keeping the center open. Since these two branches are too close together, cut that outside branch off. That gives me a nice smooth branch here. I've got really nice spacing. Take some of this inside growth. And then just like apples, I'm gonna take my 12 inch measurement these are the spurs, the lower spurs that I'm gonna save. And I'm just gonna find where that 12 inch mark is. And that's gonna show me where I should do my pruning. You'll notice they're not all the same size. That's because I was going by where the spur is growing on the outside of the branch because that's the branch that I want developed. I want the growth to continue outward and up I do not want it to continue inward to where I'm trying to keep it clean. So it may have not been right at the 12 inch mark. It was close enough to make a difference. I could have gone lower if I wanted to, but I didn't want all three of these branches to be forked at the same spot. So as far as the rest of this growth, I'm gonna save these. I'm not gonna mess with them too much this year. I am gonna take some of this real lower growth down, but I'm really not gonna touch this. I'm more focused on the growth in here that is really crowded right now. And I'm just gonna walk through and I'm look at the spacing between the branches, any outward going growth, I'm gonna trim out of the way. I have two branches that are growing really close to each other here. And since I'm going to save these branches over here, that makes it an easy choice on which one of these I'm gonna take out. It's gonna be this one. This one is growing in between this branch and this branch. It's gotta go. I can take that with my bypass pruners. Again, I made that cut right along the tree ring, so I'll get a nice healed up cut there. You won't even see that in a year or two. So for the rest of the tree, I have a choice I can make. I can take this branch completely out and I can develop this tree from this height here. And if I look around the tree, I see a lot of the growth is all at the same height and it would make a lot of sense to take this branch out. And I may do that next year, but I'm not gonna take it out this year. I can wait, it doesn't have to be right away. I still need to remove the inside growth crossing branches. And develop for spurs. So remember, it's really important to take that central leader out. These lower spurs, I can do my rough measurement. It's already where I want it to be. So I take that tip off. I remove the general. That controls all the growth. We're almost done here. This is, this has been a pretty easy tree to prune. There isn't a whole lot that I need to do. I need to correct some of this growth. Since I'm gonna be taking this out at a later date, I'm probably not so concerned about this, but I am gonna prune it for spur development. The final cut I'm gonna make on this tree, since I'm not taking this branch out right now, I do want to drop the height of the tree and bring it more in line with the growth all the way around. When you're pruning any of your trees, you want to keep the general shape uniform around the tree. So on this tree, I'm gonna bring everything down to a central height. 
Do one more cut here and we're done. I didn't do a whole lot of pruning to this and you don't need to do a whole lot of pruning year after year. You can do as much pruning as you want for your own vision. Like I said, I could have brought this tree all the way down and restarted a new tree from these branches here. All of this new growth can all be coaxed into making more branches and to fill out the tree. I don't wanna do that. Just making a few cuts around the tree. And if I made a mistake this year, I'll go back next year and I'll fix it. So again, this is Rick from Green Our Planet and this is Pruning Pear.